Welcome, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome, Church Online. And hey, if you're here, thank you guys so much for joining us. If you're out in the lobby, come on in. We got a seat for you. Hey, if it's your first time today, thank you for joining us. We're so glad that you are here. My name is Kyle Hammond. I'm the kids pastor here at Alive Church. And uh, just a couple things that is going to be an outline of what our service is going to look like. In just a second, I'm going to have the Raider family come on up. We are going to light our Advent candle here at Alive Church. After that, Jeff and the band is going to lead us in a time of worship. I'll come at, up shortly after that, talk a little bit about things that are going on here at Alive Church in the future. And then Jeff Love, our teaching pastor, is going to be speaking. We are in week four of our series, Worship the King. Today we're talking all about celebration. So really excited about that. We'll respond to that song in a time of worship. And all that is going to take place in an hour. So we're really excited. Hey, we got the Raider family up here. We got Rob and Bree and their awesome little kids, Mikey and Molly. Thank you guys so much for being here. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, let's give it up. Yeah, okay, let's give it up for them. <laughs> so Advent is a, a season where we are remembering all that Christ has done for us. So the past couple weeks, we've been lighting some of these different candles, and today we are lighting the love candle. So the last three weeks, we've lit the hope, the peace, and the joy candles. And in this week, leading up to Christmas, we're thinking about the coming of Jesus Christ and all that he's done for us, and that that is his love. John 3.16 says, For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Mm. And in that, Christ challenges us to love as well. John 13, 34, and 35 says, A new command I give to you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. All people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So in this season, we remember what Christ has done, the love that he gives, and, and we're going to celebrate that today. But he also challenges us to love one another. And so we reflect on that. So, so thank you, guys. Thank you, Raider family. And Jeff, how about you lead us with some worship? Let's stand and let's celebrate. We're going to sing. Oh, man, I don't know how to beat that. <laughs> Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. And go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Well, shepherds kept their watching over silent flocks by the night. And all throughout the heavens, the shone a holy light. Oh, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. And go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. A humble cross was born. God sent out salvation and blesses Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is go. Tell it on the mountain, over the years and everywhere, and go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Yes, he's born.
Go ahead and pray together. Father, I'm just so thank, thankful for all of us that are, that are gathered here and, and, and everyone's families, their, their tired, and all those watching online. Father, I just ask that you help them, help them to uh, just have a really super blessed Christmas this year, Father, and, uh, and just help them to uh, relax and just enjoy you and enjoy the uh, just knowing that you came here as a perfect little beautiful baby, <laughs> and, and you saved us all. You loved us that much. I mean, there's, there's this nothing greater than your love. We can't even measure it. It's unmeasurable. And it's hard to, for a lot of us to even get that, that agape love. And we're so thankful for you, Lord. It's just part of the goodness of God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Your mercy never fails me and all my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been 
Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, guys. Hey, Church Online, I'm going to send you over to Jason Marsden, our online pastor. Hey, thanks so much, Kyle. I really appreciate that. We are so excited that you are joining us here live online, or perhaps you're watching on demand down the road. Either way, we're so happy that you're here, and we would love to connect with you. Would you let me know by filling out a connection card, alivechurch.com slash card, or you can click on the I'm new here button right there in the chat, and I would love to send you a welcome packet. Um, it's just some information about us here at Alive Church, but a way that we can connect um, and get in touch with what's going on in your life. You know, I also want to talk about the Christmas offering. In this season, um, you, know, you know, from Thanksgiving on, we talk about the Christmas offering, and part of that is gifts of love. We've got this photo here of uh, some of the gifts that you guys brought in, and we distributed those on Friday night here at uh, the church. 
as well as Saturday over at Hope City, a church in Midtown. And we're just so thankful to be able to partner with them in that. But thank you guys so much for your generous gifts. 117 people um, were given gifts this Christmas because of you. And you know, if you haven't participated in the Christmas offering yet, I'd really encourage you to take a look in the Vision Runways um, and the three different areas where you can give. That's all available at alivechurch.com slash Christmas. Um, you know, speaking of Christmas, this coming Friday is Christmas Eve. Um, we've got four services here at uh, four, 1 o'clock, 2.30, 4 o'clock, and 5.30, streaming live. You can join us for that. Um, and on Saturday... We are not going to have any Saturday service because it's Christmas Day. We'd love for you to spend some time with your family. And on Sunday, we're going to have one service at 10 a.m. streaming live. So you can join us for that. There's all kinds of other events coming up, alivechurch.com slash events, including this Tuesday night um, is one night for the students. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And coming up in January is Financial Peace University. So check that out. Baptisms coming, all kinds of stuff. But everything about Christmas at livechurch.com slash Christmas. Speaking of Christmas, we are in the midst of this series, Worship the King. And if you missed any of the weeks, go back, watch them on demand. It's been a great, great ser series. And today we are continuing with week number four, part four of Worship the King. Let's get started now. Worship the King, that's what this is all about. We start out this series, if you've missed the, the beginning, we said that we were created to worship. The wise men who came to Jesus uh, in the Christmas story, they bowed before him, they said, we have come to worship him. And then we fast forward, we look at Mary a little bit, and boy, she carried the Christ child, she was favored. We talked about how the same word is used for us, that Jesus lives in us, and we said, the spirit of Christmas lives in me. The spirit of Christ lives in me. And then last week, we, we looked at how the infamous innkeeper really isn't in the Bible. There's just one line that says there was no room for him in the inn, and we created this narrative of, of this innkeeper. But we said, you know, like the innkeeper, we've got to make room for the king if we're going to worship him. And today, we want to talk about how we celebrate the king. Everybody say celebrate. celebrate. You know, the... The, the, the celebration of Christmas, it is all about good news. Aren't you glad? It's all about good news. There are a lot of voices out there trying to, to kind of steal the good news. You guys know what I'm talking about? And some of you go, oh, that's me, or I came with them. Anybody come with? No, don't tell me. <laughs> the, but it's about good news. It is all about good news. Anything less than good news about Jesus and his coming, it is taking us off of the narrative that God has for us. In fact, if you go back to that very first Christmas, and we're going to talk about today the celebration, the angels, when they announced Jesus' birth and his coming birth, uh, they, they talked about how this is good news of great joy. It's good news. Everybody say good news. Anybody hang around people who always give you bad news? I mean, some of you, you know what I'm talking about, and you may be this person. I know. And, and some of you even brag about it. It's like, well, it's just who I am. Well, change who you are. Okay, I'm trying to help you have some friends. You, you, you wonder why you have no friends. I'm telling you, it, it, life's about good news when it comes to Jesus. And we're here today. If you're new to a live church here or online, we want to point you to Jesus. That first Christmas celebration, good news, praise. It surrounds his coming, his birth. And today, the same is true. 
And it's so powerful in our lives. If we can get this concept, this spiritual discipline, a celebration, and begin to praise him, it will radically change our lives. I'm not, I'm not saying about just thinking about it. Because a lot of times when I talk about this, people go, well, I always think those kind of thoughts. I'm talking about speaking it, getting it out. It will shock your soul into the reality of God's presence and who he is and what he's done for our lives. In Luke chapter 2, we're going to live here a little bit today. This, this is where we see this, the celebration with the, the encounter of the angel and the shepherds. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding the flocks, their flocks of sheep. Now, if you're not familiar with the history and what shepherding was like in that day, this is not a top of the rung ladder job. In fact, I would say these guys, if you were a shepherd, you were trying to get on the first rung of the ladder. You're, I mean, this is a pretty low level job. And you can see it right here. They had to stay in the fields. This is all night long. They're sleeping out there with the sheep. These, these people were not respected in this position. Uh, uh, they were, again, very low concern. When people would look at them and think, oh, poor people out there having to be shepherds. And I know sometimes on our Christmas cards and in the movies, we, we really kind of make them look good and clean. And whew, that's not who they were, which is really good news for me. For us, because Jesus comes and the, the announcement of his birth is to the people who are living in a mess. Anybody relate to that? For me, I'm so, I'm so grateful. He comes in, in that moment. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the, the Lord's glory surrounded them. I, I don't know what Spielberg would make this look like, but there's so much there that I think this would be so cool. They were what? If... An angel of the Lord comes. And if there's radiance of the Lord, Spielberg kind of showing out around them, to me, I am terrified. There's nothing in me that thinks, oh man, I am so good that God is showing up here. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm in trouble, man. <laughs> They're terrified. But the angel reassured them. And God, today, he comes to us. And as we celebrate Christmas, Jesus' birth, he reassures us that he loves us. He's pursuing us. He's coming after us. And even if you don't know him yet, you've not made that decision, you're here today. You're joining us because he's pursuing you, and there's something in you that it's his love pursuing you. The story continues. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. Go back if you missed it. We talked a little bit about that history and why that's so important last week. Watch that online. You will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. You will find. He came so that we would find him, so that we would have a relationship with him. A life of forgiveness, a life of peace, of joy, of hope. Is that worth celebrating? Oh, come on, is that worth celebrating? Yes, yes it's worth celebrating, and it's not worth it's not that we celebrate it one time a year, but that we celebrate the life he's given us every day of our lives. I don't want to get used to this. I, I don't want to know that I'm forgiven and just kind of go, oh, yeah. No, I want to celebrate. Man, when we come in, we sing songs of celebration. I want to engage. I know it's tough. I walk in the door, and you know, we, we come into to church. We join online, and you spilled your coffee on your desk, and it's hard to start celebrating. Or you, most of you, you argue on the way to church, right? <laughs> and you're like, oh, I don't feel like celebrating. Man, it's a discipline, but to begin to celebrate all that God has done because everything about the celebration of Christmas is good news. Suddenly, the angel is joined by a vast host of others. The armies of heaven, what are they doing? Praising God. Praising God. I'm telling you, as a pastor, of all the spiritual disciplines, prayer, and this is a part of prayer, but of all of them, fasting, giving. If I could, if I could challenge people to do one thing so that they would stay on track and be on top of things in their spiritual journey, it would be to praise God, to celebrate him. And as I'm saying it, I'm not talking about thinking it again. I'm talking about speaking it. That moment when you start to sink low and you start to question who you are in Christ or who he is in you, I challenge you, I dare you to just begin to speak out praise 
And you go, well, that didn't work. I kind of mumbled some words this week, Jeff, and I just kind of felt the same. Then speak it out louder. I, and I, I want you to know, this is going to burst some of your bubble here, but first of all, it was not a, 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 a choir of angels that came. It was an army of heaven praising God. This is a warrior kind of thing that you're going to battle when you speak to praise God. And another thing I hate to burst your bubble about, but they were saying, not singing. Anybody really disappointed in the movies right now? I know. But that's good news because some of y'all, you can't sing. And you're like, I'm in trouble. Well, no, you're not. This army of heaven comes and they're saying the praises of God. Speak it out. They're saying glory to God in the highest heaven. Let's read this together. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to Speak it out. Speak out God's glory. Speak out his praise. And you may not even be a follower of Jesus. I dare you this week to just start thanking God out loud, praising him for the fact that he sent his son. We're going to celebrate that Christmas Eve. Begin to speak it out. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that's happened, which the Lord has told us about. Let's go. Let's see. Let's go. Let's see. That's our part. Let's go. Let's see. And let's celebrate. Let's go, let's see, let's celebrate. Celebrate the good things he's done. You know, it, it's so easy in life to start getting used to our relationship with others, with God. And we start to coast in that. What if we lived in the celebration of all that he really has done for us? The good news. What if we would do that in our relationships with one another? That every day we would, we would celebrate all the good things in our relationships. It's, it's easy to focus on the bad. Anybody can do that. It takes spiritual discipline to celebrate, to focus on the good. Let's celebrate. Glory to God in the highest. They hurried to the village. They found Mary and Joseph, and there were... And there was the baby lying in the manger. It's celebrating, it's praising God because there is Jesus, the Messiah, lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told who? <laughs> Jesus is lying in the manger. And again, the movies and on our Christmas cards, we make that so perfect and clean and romantic. But the reality is they kept the sheep at night, often in caves. It was dirty, it was dark, it was cold. The manger would have been, unlike what we have on stage here, it would have been carved out in stone. If today you had a baby and you laid them in a cold, dark cave or it was damp on stone, somebody's calling CPS on you, you know, and you're like, whoa, you can't treat them like that. Jesus comes in the midst of all that, and it's a picture of our lives, and he comes in our loneliness, our darkness, our dirt, our mess, and he gives us life. I'm telling you, that's worth celebrating. I know my life before Jesus, the hopelessness, the darkness, and he comes and I'm like, this is worth celebrating. I don't wanna get used to it. And I wanna tell everyone what happened and what he's done in my life. All who heard what the shepherd's story, uh, they were astonished, but Mary kept these things in her heart. She thought about them often. I mean, how often do I really think through what he's done in my life? The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had done, all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Glorifying God, celebrating. Jesus is born. It's all good news for us, for me. Now, we get it I mean, when, a, when a child is born. If they've, you've had one born in your family, it's exciting. Those are great times, aren't they? I, we, we have four kids, and I was at the birth of all four of my kids. You know, I was helping pull them out. The doctors gave me, I'm just begging for special privileges. They put me in the, I still have the, um, the doctor's clothes that they gave me that first time. I don't fit in them anymore, but I'm keeping them. <laughs> but on our second daughter, Katie, when she was born, uh, they could not get her to breathe. I mean, they were pushing me out of the room. She turned dark purple. Pretty soon, the doctor turned away from me 
And the nurses are trying to shoo me out. They're going in and out trying to get equipment. And it went on. It felt like forever. And you could tell the, the tension went from celebration to like, this is bad news. It took a couple minutes. And finally, finally, they got her to breathe. I'll, I'll never forget because we, we, we said, let's name her Katie Jewell. We hadn't picked out a name until we saw her. We were kind of those people that we wanted to see our kid. What did they look like? Katie Jewell. I said, let's, let's put a second L on Jewell just to remind us of the life that God has given her. We forgot all about that, but somehow when they brought us the, the certificate, the hospital said, sorry, we misspelled her name. There were two L's on there. And we're like, that's God <laughs> reminding us of the life that he had given her. You know, that, that life is celebration. And a picture of Katie being born and not thinking that she's gonna make it in those few moments. That's a picture of our lives going from death to this resurrected life that he has for us. It's good news. It's worth celebrating, isn't it? Now, some of you, you're still in your mind. I, I, when you celebrate, you're so mellow, like mellow yellow. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to show you a picture of what celebration really looks like. And I want to say thank you to my son, Joel, for allowing me to do this. He's actually, he's a grown man now, and he's actually running the cameras today back here. He's on camera. But this is when he's eight years old, and he got his first DS, dual screen for those of you who are older than me, and you don't know what that is. Um, and he had no idea he was going to get it. But you got to watch close, okay? This is, this is what celebration looks like. <laughs> is that celebration? That's what I'm talking about. You get that excited about Jesus and what he's done in your life? We're here to say, this is good news. Did you notice me being a dad? I don't even know why I said, I feel like I said, you're going to shoot your eye out, kid. because You're going to break it, kid. I have no, we were talking this morning. He said, I don't know why I called you kid instead of son or Joel. I never called him kid. Uh, you guys want to see it again? Okay. <laughs> if we could grab a hold of the truth of what Christmas introduces into our life and ultimately going to the cross and the forgiveness of our sins that our guilt, our shame is removed, that we no longer are held accountable for our sins because Jesus pay, came to pay the price for us from heaven to earth, and we'll celebrate. And, and I don't care who knows, I want everybody to know because I'm forgiven, I'm free. I have purpose, I have peace, I have joy. Let's celebrate. Why? Why do we do that? Why do we celebrate? Well, God sent his son, we celebrate. Say it with me. God sent his son, we celebrate. He sent his son. We celebrate what he's done in our lives. I, I heard Kyle talking about just the, even the Christmas offering. It, it's a part of our, our vision of celebrating the goodness of God so that he's given us. Let's give to others. You guys are awesome in giving to others. You heard about the gifts. This last week, I was down in Mexico. Um, myself and Steve, we were training pastors and handing out some of the, the Bibles that were done in Spanish, which you guys gave toward last year. And we're still handing those out. We got 17 churches down there using the, the Bibles, the Life Transformation Bibles. By the way, if you guys don't have one, this isn't Spanish version. Uh, this is the English version. You can get those for free. If you want to learn Spanish, get the Spanish version. Read that. I don't know if that'll teach you Spanish or not. But I'll mail you one. We want you to have those in your hands. There's a great plan in there for discipleship. Take one of those. We're actually going to be walking through this this next year, the, uh, the daily readings in here, all the, the sermons, all the teachings, the one voice stuff, we'll all go along with that. So we're going to do that together. So get one. Um, but man, what a privilege it was to hand those out to those guys last year. Uh, I mean, last week. It's about us celebrating. We're so grateful what God has done for us that we want to give to others. That's what this is all about. You know, I was thinking about uh, another celebration around here. Anybody been to our baptismal services? Man, I love that celebration. It's a picture of what Jesus has done in our lives. If you've not been baptized, 
you're, you put your faith in Jesus, are you going to do that today? That's your next step. And you know what we're going to do when you come up out of the water? Because it's a picture of you going, joining his death, coming up to his, out of the water, his resurrection. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to celebrate. It's a picture of life. We need to get Joel up here and really know, teach us how to celebrate that, right? I, it's like so exciting when you, you walk through that. I, I want to encourage you. Take that next step. So why do we do this? Well, God sent his son. We celebrate because a savior is born. Everybody say savior. savior. In other words, now I don't have to negotiate with God about my sins. Have you ever bartered with God? I have. Like, God, I'll never do that again if you'll do this or if you'll forgive me. Oh, I'll never do it again. And then, you know, you do it again, of course, because we're sinners. And he's like, yeah, I know. I knew that. You feel more guilt. He's like, no, no, I don't have to negotiate. It's all because of the cross of Christ and what he did for me there. When, when I die, I'm going to stand before God. He's going to say, Jeff, why should I let you into heaven? I'm not going to go into a dissertation about, man, you know, I pastored. I, I did this thing for this life transformation by all these good things. It, none of that counts anything. It's worthless compared to my sin. I'm going to say, you see the one who's sitting next to you on your right hand, Jesus? That's why. I have not done anything worthy. There's no negotiating. It's because of him. My faith is in him. A savior is born. I, I want you to see what Mary res Mary's response was when she heard that she was about to have a son. If you go back and you remember what we talked about with this, uh, we, we, she's so blessed. I mean, we, we get that. We're blessed that he, he gives us grace. But that announcement to her, she's pregnant. She's a virgin. She has a fiance. Uh, she she's li lives in a culture that you would have been an outcast because you're having a baby outside of wedlock. She knew that this announcement brings some very heavy elements to her life. But look at her response. She responded, oh, how my soul, what? Pray. She didn't think it. She said it out loud. Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. How my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. To praise him, to rejoice. In Ephesians, Paul, who writes a lot of the New Testament, he, he gives us, uh, we're, we are the New Testament church after Jesus. Anything before Jesus is Old Testament now it's the New Testament. Paul, who's a follower of Jesus, and he uh, starts a lot of churches. He says, so we praise God. Let's read together. We praise God for the glorious grace he's poured out on us who belong to his dear son. That I guess I celebrate. I pray. His grace forgives me. I needed a savior. He brought me a savior. Jesus, he's my savior. You see, sometimes we forget why he came from heaven to earth. I cannot save myself from my sin because the penalty of sin is death. I don't have the ability to resurrect my life. So if I pay for my sin, that's it. I'm in trouble. I'm done. That's the end of it. Jesus comes, and it's as though if you can picture if you were, fell into a river and you, you're out of control, you're going to drown. You don't want people in the bank going, oh, look at them. That's just too bad. Or say, hey, I'll pray for you. No, you're like, help me. Throw me the rope. Throw me the, the life saver. That sounded like candy, didn't it? <laughs> I'll take that right now. <laughs> yeah, what, what are those, those life rings? Throw, throw me that. And that's what God did when he sent his son. That's why we celebrate. I'm going under. And I know some of you, you're like, man, I got a good life. I'm, I'm okay. I'm still doing okay in my own strength. All, all I can tell you is that you will come to the end of your own strength. I, I, I came to the end of mine very young because I grew up in such darkness and hopelessness in, in the, the environment that I was in. And some of you can relate to that. And when I saw the life ring of Jesus, I realized he's my savior. We need a savior. That's why he came. It, it makes for great Christmas cards and Christmas movies, but it's so critical. I need a savior, somebody to save me from my sin. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to what? 
save the world through him. If you're not a follower of Jesus and you just feel like, well, God's judging me, he's not up there waiting to flip you on the head. He sent his son to save you, to forgive us. He sent a savior. That's why I celebrate. I need a savior. God sent his son, so we God sent his son, we celebrate because a savior is born and because I have eternal life. In other words, I can know things are good between me and God. Sometimes I'll hear Christians even talk about like, yeah, I hope I got this. Like you hope? Dude, this is it. I, this is my only hope. I, it's not just hope. It's, there's a guarantee here. I can lay my head down at night. You can lay your head down at night with an assurance that through Jesus, you have eternal life. That's good. That's worth celebrating, isn't it? But Jeff, I messed up today. I know. <laughs> And yet through Christ, I'm forgiven. Oh, thank you, Lord. I want to be like Joel. Yeah! Jesus! I have eternal life. John 3, 16, a familiar verse with a lot of people. We see it in the end zones of the football games. This is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. To believe in him is not just to say, yeah, I believe Jesus was a good teacher, a good man, a prophet. No, it's to put my faith in him, to say, the only reason I'm getting in is because of him. It's not because of me. It's not based on what I do or don't do. It's what he has done for me on the cross. That's what it's all about. We have eternal life. Anybody glad about that? And it's a guarantee for us. Second Corinthians, Paul says, for God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. He gave this wonderful message of reconciliation. My my dad, you hear me talk about it, and it's just my story. Uh, I grew up in darkness. My dad was an alcoholic till the day he died. Uh, He was an abusive man. And we prayed for him. Many of you prayed for him. Mac Norris is one of our elders and one of our pastors. He's been my prayer partner most of my life as a pastor. He's in this service. Mac would go see him, and he'd pray for him. He struck up a friendship ministering to my dad. And Mac, every conversation he would say to my dad, he'd say, Ron, you know, you know we're going to end the conversation with this. What are you going to do with Jesus? You need, have you asked for forgiveness of your sins? My dad, no, I don't, don't want to do that. But he loved Mac coming around. My dad dad never changed his life. The day he died, he died at 1 o'clock in the morning. At noon that day before he died, he, by himself, Mac had prayed with him so many times. I've had the chance to pray with him. and he, he, He prayed to receive Christ by himself in that room. And we know that because he told the nurse in the afternoon, he said, tell Mac Norris. I don't know how, Mac rated higher than I did. <laughs> Tell Mac Norris, I put my faith in Jesus today. Now, even as I tell that story, I mean, dad lived his whole life like that, and yet still, man, he's reconciled to God. My dad is everything that I would dream that he could have been, he is now in heaven. And some of you are going, well, that's how I want to live my life. I want to live it my way, and on my dying deathbed, my, I want, then I want to make, because then I get everything I want. Can I, let, let me just clarify the story a little bit, okay? My dad lived a miserable life. He lived with so much regret. We had conversations over the last few years of the regret. He missed out on family, relationships. He died alone because of that. He, he understood that. Don't miss out on the joy, the peace, the hope, the purpose, the life that he has for you. If my dad could stand up here today Now, where he's at in heaven, he would tell you, don't wait. Don't miss out on the celebration of life and forgiveness and freedom. My dad was haunted by his past and his sin. We don't have to live like that. He wants to reconcile us to him. If you've never made that decision, I want to give you that chance. And those of you who are Christians, man, we need to live in this celebration, right? I got it! Yeah, I love it, DS. And I want you to see that, that how important this is. This is a guarantee. God's spirit guarantees that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that has purchased to be his own people. He did this, let's read it together, so we would praise and glory. 
Why did he send his spirit who lives in us after we make a decision to follow him? Why does he send his spirit as a guarantee? So that we will praise and glory, so that we will celebrate. That's what this is all about. If we could learn the spiritual difference, di- discipline, it will change our lives. Kathy and I, we right now, uh, a few months ago, about three months ago, we got her a new laptop for her work. She's working away, and it has a 90-day guarantee on it, and this week it crashed, it burned, and I'm like, I got like five days left to get this thing back. Now, I have no idea why I did this, but she was in Seattle at her mom's last week, and I'm throwing away stuff. I love to throw away stuff. Anybody else? Yeah. I'm telling you, you don't want to give me your stuff because I like throwing things away. I love hearing the garbage truck come. I'm like, I'm in bed. He comes so early. I'm like, oh, that's a sweet sound, man. <laughs> Second only to Jesus coming. I don't know why. But I just love getting rid of junk and stuff. I don't, I'm a minimalist that way. So last week, we had that new laptop box still, and I'm like, we're done with this junk. I threw it away last week, and now it crashes and burns. But it has a 90-day guarantee, and I'm telling you, in my mind, I'm thinking, I don't have the receipt. I don't have the box. I'm going to go back to the store here because I only got three days left and say, here's what happened. And I'm wondering if they'll really honor the guarantee. We don't have to wonder with Jesus the seal, the promise that he will fulfill the guarantee is his spirit living in us. We can rest assured. That's what we're celebrating. I don't have to live in any kind of questioning of whether or not he has forgiven my sin and he's gonna say, well done, good and faithful servant. It's because of what he's done, not what I do. Our memory verse throughout this series has been this, and this is why we're talking about this. You must worship the Lord. Let's say it together. You must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. I say it the NIV way. I'm sorry. And serve only him. You must worship him. Worship the king. How do we worship him? Celebration. Let's celebrate the good news. Everything about Jesus coming from heaven to earth, going to the cross, is good news for us. Let's celebrate that. Here's what I want to challenge you to do this week. I dare you to do this this week. I will begin each day with celebration. I will give God thanks for sending his son, Jesus. Man, if you don't know what to celebrate, here it is. Thank him for sending Jesus. I will praise him for all he's done in my life. In fact, I would say go back even to the moments where you've had a a, a hard time. I've gone back to, man, growing up the way I did, and I'm at the place and became at this place probably 20 years ago. Thank you, Lord. You kept me during that time. You led me during that time, even when I didn't know you. It's amazing what he does in our life. Begin to, to praise him for all he's done in my life, and I will set my heart to give him glory. And if you Jeff, it's not working. Well, do it out loud. Get louder. Uh, shout it out. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to sing a song of celebration. Are you guys ready to celebrate? Yeah, I feel like I need to show you the video one more time before we sing this song. (laughs) Man, this is good news. We're going to celebrate this good news and all he's done for us. Before we do, though, I want to pray. I want to pray for all of us who are followers of Jesus that we would not get used to this. That people would see we have something to celebrate. And they would want what we have, which is Christ. It's nothing, anything we've done or not done. It's Christ. It's Jesus. We want to point people to Jesus. And for those of you who don't know him, that you would receive him with celebration today and joy. Father, thank you so much that you sent your son, that everything around your birth, Jesus, is good news. It's celebration of good news because you you came so that we could be made right with God the Father, so that we could have peace, peace of mind from our guilt, our shame. We could have forgiveness. Oh, God, we celebrate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. I I just, I thank you right now. Lord, I, I know there are people listening to me who have never made that decision. If that's you, take that first step. You've already taken a first step by coming, by joining us online. Take the next step. Just say, Lord, I, I invite you into my life. I, I ask you to forgive me of my sin. 
Remove all the guilt, the shame of my past. I invite you to take up residency in my heart. Help me to live this life of celebration. Fill me with your peace, your power, your purpose, your hope, your life, your light. Thank you that you do that right now. I receive that in faith. And Jesus, Father, we, right now, we take this moment. We're gonna sing, we're gonna celebrate the good news that you came, you gave your life for us, and you are alive, and you're living in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together, guys, and let's sing with Jeff. Let's celebrate. Are you ready? the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, my God, he holds a victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. Shout out your praise, that joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, that we won't be quiet. Shout out your praise, oh, we shout out. God who is, we sing to the God who saves, we sing to the God who always makes the way. Cause he hung up on that cross, they rose up from the grave, my God still rolling stones away. Shout out your praise, let's join in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. Shout out your praise. We were the beggars, now we're the royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven. Accepted, redeemed by His grace Let the house of the Lord sing praise One more time, come on We were the beggars Now we're royalty We were the prisoners Now we're running free We are forgiven, accepted Redeemed by His grace Let the house of the Lord And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. and joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. and joy in the house of the Lord. And joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. and joy in the house of the Lord. Surely in this place we won't be crying. We shout out your praise. Oh, we shout out your praise. Shout out your praise.
Joy. Let me hear you say joy. Joy. Yeah, amen. Thank you, band. Thank you, guys. And thank you, Jeff, as well, for that great message. And other Jeff as well. <laughs> hey, Church Online, I'm going to send you over to our online pastor, Jason Marsden. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Kyle. What a celebration. What a way to end. And if you're going to take that next step this week, would you let me know by filling out your connection card? If you're going to start each day by celebrating, put that on your card, um, livechurch.com slash card. And speaking of celebration, if you made a faith decision today for the very first time and you made Jesus the leader of your life, would you let me know? I want to send you a New Believers Kit. It includes our Life Transformation Bible, as well as other resources, including a baptism packet. We've got baptism coming up um, on the 8th and 9th of January. We are so excited about that, and we'd love to get you baptized. If you've made a faith decision, that is the prerequisite to baptism, and that's it. Um, and so if you've not been baptized and you've made a faith decision, please let me know. We'll get you baptized either here on the campus or we'll make arrangements to do it right where you're at. Even if you're in a different city, state, country, I'd love to help make that happen. So please let me know about that. Don't forget, Friday is Christmas Eve. We've got those four services. Invite your friends all over the world. They can join us live as long as they've got an internet connection and a device to watch on. I'd love to have them here. Um, we've got the digital invites there. We've got invites here as well. Um, so I invite them for that. Nothing on Christmas Day. Um, just spend time with your family. And then one service next Sunday at 10 a.m. So enjoy your week. Enjoy your time with family. And we'll see you back here on Friday.